Well, here's the real reason for my retirement right here. <laughs> Say hello, Rachel. Hi. Yeah. You can smile. No, you, she's been practicing her smile for weeks, Hi, Mr. President. She's been practicing her smile for weeks, and now she can't do it. Now she's tired. She's been up since 2 o'clock. Come on. Here we go. <laughs> Hi. Hi. One thing, based unlike any others, they haven't fascinated me. Usually a baby comes in here, they can't take their eyes off the camera. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Just she hasn't yeah. seen them yet. She's too busy here, looking at you. Here, let's take a look at the cameras and see how you like that. Uh, she does. Oh, oh, there. Nice. Is she I think really? she's a, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Come on, look at that. Look. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I guess we have to go to the other room there. I think yeah, so. There's yeah. a number of people there. So. Okay. <laughs> so happens this young man was a titan for hard work, intelligence, and dedication. And it also has happened that he had a hand in changing American history. Dave came to this administration after years of work up on the hill, first as an aide and then as a congressman. And uh, he's seen it firsthand how the, the taxes and spending have surged out of control and he's determined to see things changed. Dave, you once aptly described the Office of Management and Budget as the needle's eye through which all policy must pass. Well, as director of OMB, you shaped policy and turned the flow of money and power away from government and back to the people. You helped engineer the tax cut, you designed proposals to cut spending growth and fought for them courageously on Capitol Hill. Your efforts in the past four and a half years have been long and exhausting and have entailed sheer, a share of frustrations and disappointments, but the achievements are remarkable. The taxes were cut, indexed, overspending was brought into the spotlight of public attention, Inflation is down, the interest rates are dropping, and confidence in the economy and in our institutions has returned. America is better off since we took office, and Dave, a generous share of that credit is yours. Now, I first got to know Dave when we were practicing for the presidential <laughs> debates in the 1980 <coughs> campaign. He played Jimmy Carter. <laughs> 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 I lost some of the practice debates. <laughs> now, uh, when we start to hear about your success on Wall Street and how you and Jennifer have turned the Big Apple upside down, I'll just smile to myself and say, there he goes again. <laughs> Dave's interest in figures started way back. When he was a young man getting an education, he was in a science class. The professor was lecturing on the sun and the earth and some things of that kind. And the professor explained that in about a billion years, the sun would have burned itself out, would be just a cold cinder, and the earth would be a frozen chunk of nothing <coughs> floating through the atmosphere. And a hand went up and it was young David's hand. And he said, how many years did you say? And the professor said, a billion. And he said, oh, thank God, I thought you said a million. <laughs> Dave and Jennifer, we'll miss you, and we wish you all the best, and God bless you. so you won't forget us. Okay. Oh. Well, Mr. President, I want to thank you so very much for those very kind words, and it seems like today so many kind words have been coming in. Uh, I received a telegram this morning that said, uh, with greatest respect and best wishes for your future, Dave, the Reagan cabinet approved five to four. <laughs> <laughs> 
I had uh, thought, Mr. President, that uh, given all that we have gone through on this occasion, it would be useful for me to present a farewell briefing. So I have prepared that, but I am not able to pass it out to all of you gathered here because they've already taken my Xerox machine away, uh, as well as everything else in my office. So uh, as I sat there this afternoon in an empty office with a bare table in front of me and nothing really to do, I, I thought to myself, uh, Mr. President, there must be something in these uh, last hours that I could think of that I could do that would make your burden easier in the future. And so I sat there thinking, and the only thing on the table uh, before me was my hand calculator. <laughs> so I began to play with it, and then I discovered the problem that we have had for the last four and a half years. This thing, the subtraction button, does not work on it. <laughs> so as I retire, I would like to uh, retire this calculator as well. <laughs> Before they took my pen away, Mr. President, I, I did uh, take the opportunity to pen to you in the most uh, sincere and heartfelt way that I could the appreciation that I feel for the opportunity that you have given me and the enormous challenges and progress that we have made here under your leadership. And if it would be okay with you, I would like to share this very brief letter with everyone here because I think it expresses uh, better than any other way how I really feel about the privilege I've had to be with you. Dear Mr. President, a sad day has arrived for me, the day I leave service in your administration and embark on a new career and challenge. I do so with heartfelt gratitude for the opportunity you have given me to participate in a historic and momentous venture. You set out to change the course of American history and to steer the nation back to its true strength, prosperity, and greatness. You have succeeded to a remarkable degree and with permanent effect. Even though difficult problems still lie ahead, our nation's directions and goals are clear once again. I will always be proud of whatever contributions I have made along the way. More importantly, I will always cherish the kindness, consideration, and pa patience you afforded me, sometimes under very trying circumstances. Um, <laughs> Especially one time. <laughs> Changing decades old uh, habits and policies has necessarily given rise to contention and disagreements among all of us entrusted with the responsibilities of governance. But your unfailing grace, spirit, and goodwill have made all those debates and battles more pleasant, rewarding, and memorable than you can possibly appreciate. As you know, Jennifer and I are now the parents of a three-month-old daughter <laughs> right next to you. Just as Rachel is the pride of our lives, I know that someday the pride of hers will be that her father was privileged to serve President Ronald Reagan. With your leadership, America was put on a new path that will mean a bright and hopeful future for her and millions of her fellow citizens. For this, we will always be grateful. Mr. President, you have my abiding respect as I leave and my best wishes as you continue with the challenges ahead. Thank you. Eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> We've drowned your sorrow. <laughs> so, my orders are from the nurse's aide. <laughs> and I gotta go back up and get the nurse up again. <laughs> Jack? Mr. President, how are you? Fine. You're looking well, great. Feel good. Yeah, all right. All right. Good to see you today. See you. Who's tending the store? This is to get you through. Okay, thanks, Don. Great. Mr. President, could we take a picture with my brother and sister in law? We sure can lay out the house. This is Robert, my sister in law, and her son Jeff, and my brother Steve. Hello there. 